What is up YouTube? Johnny B here again today and we are bringing you another video. This is going to be a special video because you guys have been asking for something like this. I've had a lot of uh, guys contact me on Instagram to try and figure out how to do this. And it is installing a Rocket Bunny V3 if you guys haven't noticed you know, from the title already. Uh, I did do a Rocket Bunny V3 install a little while back. Uh, pretty much I just showed like a before and after, didn't go too much into detail. It was just something that I needed to get out the same day. Like it was literally, he brought it early morning, I started cutting, started doing everything, and by the end of the day, he came, it was, it was supposed to be done. I think it took me like two days actually to get that done. And the kit was on, everything was looking pretty good. Uh, so it was pretty much a job that I had to do and get done as soon as possible, so I really couldn't show you guys you know, any detail on that. But now we have a little bit more time since I'm also gonna be painting a kit, or the V3 kit. So I have a little bit of time to show you guys the process, show you guys what you need to do apart from just cutting your fender. And you know, hope this video helps out in case you're thinking about installing it yourself. Obviously a lot of, a lot of guys out there want to do the DIY, don't want to pay you know, someone to do it for them. So they come and bring it to a shop or you know, just in case you guys are in town and you guys like the work that I do, I can also go ahead and do that for you if you're not comfortable or if you don't have the tools or the space to do it yourself. So let's get into it. Okay, so here is the cut I did on the Rocket Bunny. As you can see, since we're gonna be doing the V3, I went ahead and removed the little bumper clip. If you are doing a V1 and don't, and you're gonna be keeping your stock bumper, I would recommend keeping that bumper clip. You see as I cut up there, it was about an inch above the body line that's normally here on FRS. I just cut it straight back. And with the V3s, the bumper attachment is actually much, much more round in this section. So I literally needed to cut more than usual uh, if you look here this was cut and pushed back out of the way as well as here this little rib right here as you can see it's now flattened in that area because your tire will rub on that and then here when you are turning it will catch on that and you won't be able to do full locks so you have to pretty much cut the corners and then flower it back and then it looks a little bit darker there because I went ahead and added some underbody coat just to protect that. The V3 just requires a lot more aggressive cut. The main point that you want to do, you don't really want to stress about where the cut, you just want to make sure that what you are doing is being covered by the kit. So for example, the kit goes all the way to the back of the fender. So all that's going to be covered. And then from here, it goes all the way up to the fender garnish under the fender garnish takes this body line here and ends up like right behind the light so all that is going to be covered so don't be afraid to cut because you know the kit will cover the more you cut obviously the less weight you're going to have because you're going to be removing more of the material it doesn't really matter it's all going to get covered up on the v3 kit your stock bash bar will be seen so half of it the part the section that's actually going to be visible i just went ahead and flat blacked it just so it's gonna be a little bit more hidden, you know, when the bumper's on, it's gonna be visible. Obviously, we did the same thing to this side. What you do to one side, you do to the other.
here is the cut that I do. So pretty much I try to get it straight up there. And then this go ahead, it just gets cut about a half an inch above the body line. And then from here, it will just go straight down as well. What I do is I just go ahead and peel off the top layer. You can see it's just glued on. And at the beginning of this, you guys saw me taking off some spot welds. Those are the spot welds right there. Normally you have to cut those off. So I just spot weld them, it comes off nice and easy. So this second piece of basically the corner panel, the inner part, you're gonna go ahead and slice, this, slice it up as much as you can and pretty much fold it up to the part where it reaches the, the body paint or the, the quarter panel. That's obviously the section that's painted. And then it gets welded up on there and sealed. So this is an important piece that you do not want to chop off. This is how it should look after you go ahead and just slice it all up. Make sure you slice it back far enough to where you fold it and it's gonna be flat with this piece or as flat as possible with your actual quarter panel. So after they're all cut up, just go ahead and push them up. So they should be easy to be moved around. Pretty much can just go ahead and hold them up, weld them. I don't cut them completely to length until I'm done welding them. So you're just gonna be welding as you see there, I grinded them and be welding them to the actual quarter panel. Kind of just like how this one's sitting perfectly flush right there. just. Weld it and do the same thing with all of them, and then after that, we'll seal it all up. So, here it is pretty much spot welded in all those areas. Probably put like two spot welds per piece. They don't need to be super reinforced, but they do need to be on there properly. So, now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is chop these off. There it is, kit installed. Making sure everything's fitting properly. Yep, get around this stuff. good okay so now that everything is test fitted we're gonna have to go under here and we're gonna have to seal all this up as you can see that's where we welded we did all the splices to make sure that that folded up tack folded it all now we're gonna go ahead and seal that up After that, we're just gonna go ahead and coat it with like some underbody coat or, or a flat black just so that when you look through this vent, you don't see orange. You don't wanna be seeing orange, so this is all gonna get coated black. 
obviously after it's all sealed up. So let me get on that. Okay, so after you get it all sealed up, as you can see here, I have it all sealed up. Got all the edges. Went ahead and sanded it down a little bit. Now I'm gonna add some underbody coat. So in this case, I have some of this Krylon Automotive Undercoating rubber, rubberized surface. So a lot of this stuff is already on the car from factory. So if you look at this little section here, there's, this is all rubberized. It's just like an underbody coat that helps protect it from rock chips and stuff like that. So now that it's completely sealed, we're gonna go ahead and add some of that. You can see I already sprayed quite a bit over here. Okay, gotta get it all covered up. Okay, so now that we have the kit all installed, everything is sealed up and underbody coated. I'm gonna go ahead and test fit the wheels because regardless, I'm gonna have to put them on so I can move the car out of the way so I can start doing some of the prep and paint work for the kit, but it'll give us a, a nice sneak peek of what the car is gonna look like fit man wise. Uh, and it'll also give me enough time you know, to let the, the rear quarter panels you know, dry up from all that stuff that I put on there to seal them up. Alright guys, so we got the wheels on. The fitment is looking really good. Obviously me and me and uh, the, the customer spoke a lot about what fitment was gonna be for this kit. He wanted to make sure that he bought what he needed and it was gonna look good. Obviously he's he's not gonna go for some expensive three, four, five thousand dollar wheels um, after buying the kit, you know, trying to get it all done. He just wanted to go with some normal wheels. Uh, and obviously when you go with normal one piece wheels, they're not gonna have the perfect offset, especially for the V3 kit. So I talked with him a lot about um, offsets and what would look the best and it looks like we got it all down. Uh, it was pretty much a guessing game because I know Paul, which is the, the V3 kit we did before, just ordered his stuff straight from Forgestar. The fitment was perfect. Apart from the rears that when he lowered them, they were sunk in a little bit too much. So I think the rears were an 11 inch negative 30. So my guess is he needed a negative 60 to have you know enough poke to where he, when he aired out, um, the tires would be flush with the kit. Because uh, once you start going lower, you know you get more camber. And in this case, this this is a square set of wheels. We have 10.5 in the fronts, 10.5s in the rears. They are a plus 15 offset. Um, tires in front are 255s, which is what I'm running in front, and then the rears are 285s. Um, so they're a little bit, little bit wider wheels, even though it's the same size uh, width on the wheels, they still fit on there pretty good because the fronts are stretched a little bit, whereas the rears are, are pretty much how they should be. In the front, since he wanted to have a little bit more options for wheels, we went with a 25 mil spacer that is a conversion adapter. So it goes from five by 100 to five by 114.3. So that way he can get the wheels that he wanted and fitment is good. So this is, Technically, it's a 10.5. If it's a plus 15 with a 25 mil spacer, we're looking at a negative 10. Negative 10 in the front on the 10.5. So if he was running an 11, it obviously need to be less. If he was running a nine and a half like I am, it'd need to be more um, just because of the fact that the kit is so wide. So if you guys are thinking about fitment, you know, that'll give you kind of an idea. It's fitment and it's just a lot of math that you have to do with, with offsets and stuff like that. So in the rear, we're actually running 75 millimeter spacers in the rear just to get the wheel to stick out that much. So I know it's a lot of spacer, but you know, when you're on a budget and you just want, want it to get it done and it look good, it works. You guys know I'm running spacers in the rear as well. So it's nothing out of the ordinary. And I even track mine with a spacer on it. Never had any issues. It just depends on how you torque down the wheels. So if you give them the proper torque, they should never fall off. And the fitment is just looking really good. So after this kit gets painted, which is probably the next step is to move the car out of here take off the kit, get it all prepped up and probably paint it tonight. I didn't want to paint it before I drilled all these holes and was trying to test fit it and hold it because I didn't want to be scratching it or chipping the paint. I just want to make sure that the holes were already pre-made. So that way now that it's gonna get painted, as soon as the parts are painted and they dry up, they're gonna just slide right on. 
So I'm really liking the way the kit's looking. Uh, there was a little issue with, with a little crack on the rear quarter panel piece on the left side, but that was been fixed and pretty much everything else, the kit has really good fitment. You know, that's why I always recommend you guys to go with a legit kit, just because it makes my job a lot easier and it makes it cheaper for you guys that I don't have to put that much, you know, hours into having to fix stuff like that. That shouldn't need to be fixed to, to make it fit. Here are the parts fully clear coated, stored away in the shed so they can dry without any interference of bugs or dirt or anything. And they are protected by. Next step is going to go ahead and be to put on this rubber lining. So you can see this got like a little double sided sticky tape here. And this little hook that you guys see here on this is going to just go ahead and hook around the whole outside of the kit, that giving it a nice perfect seal. So there it is. The rubber lining is now on and I really like it. I have it on my actual kit as well, mainly because it just kind of seals off your wide body kit from your actual you know fender in this case and it keeps you know water and dirt from kind of going in there and it also kind of keeps your paint underneath protected not that it really matters too much but you know that's some little extra thing that I like uh, I mainly did ba basically because my kit is white on white and I didn't really want it to blend I wanted it to stand out and having a little black outline definitely helps have the fender stand out. All right, so the side skirt is on. Couldn't really record it because I was putting it on. So it, it's literally the quarter panel piece with the side skirt. Color is pretty close. The, the paint on the car is actually a little bit faded, so maybe with like a little bit of buffing. This is obviously how it should look. Obviously it's gonna get faded over the, day, over the years. Okay, so the fender's on, side skirt. This rear quarter panel. Let's go to the other side. This quarter panel's on. Side skirt's on. And the front fender. Mm -hmm. 